Today I want to talk about pH. What is it? What's the effects of it? How do we test it? How do we change it? And what is the level that we desire? But first, welcome to Stillworks and Brewing. My name is Randy and this is the channel that's all about home distillation and brewing. My goal is to give out some information that us home brewers and home distillers need to know about. Um, so, this will be the short answer to the long question. And at the end, we're going to perform a visual experiment on how yeast acts with different pH levels. I just thought that might be interesting for everybody to, to, to see what's going on. But first, we need to answer some questions. And they might seem like very simple questions, but they're questions nevertheless. Okay, first question is, what is pH? Well, pH is a measure of how much acidic or base a mash or the water, whatever we're testing, is. Uh, so that's the first question. Question number two, what scale do we use? Okay, in pH, it goes from 0 to 14. 0 being the most acidic, 7 would be neutral, and 14 would be mostly base. Alright, well, the next question would be, what's it our desired pH? Okay, the desired pH is a range somewhere from 5.2 to 5.4 is where yeast likes it the best. Okay, so what's the next question? How do we check pH? Well, basically you can check pH with, uh, they have testing strips. Okay, and you can get these testing strips for about $5 for 150 strips, so they're very inexpensive. You know, and all you do is you dip the, uh, the strip into the uh, whatever you're tacking and then match the color up and it will tell you basically what your pH is. Okay, another way of testing pH is using a pH meter. Uh, you just pull the cap off and you put it inside the liquid and it will tell you basically what your pH is, okay? And these can range anywhere from like $10 on up to whatever you want to spend, okay? All right, so now we've checked our pH. Next question is, how do we change pH? Okay, to change pH, to, to rise the pH, okay, to make it more base, you're going to use a little bit of baking soda, okay? And that will rise or raise the pH, okay? To lower the pH, you know, to make it more acidic, you're going to use a little citrus acid or some lemon juice. But just remember, this goes a long way, okay? So don't use very much. I usually use pinches at a time. Uh, so it goes a long ways. All right? So how long does it take once you raise or lower pH, how long does it take before it gets stabilized, okay? Well, about 10, or uh, let's say 15 to 20 minutes. I mean, you can check it right away, and you're gonna be pretty close, but at least give it 10 to 15 to 20 minutes, and it will stabilize, and you get a more accurate number, okay? And the last question I got for this time is, when do we check the pH? Me, myself, I like to check the pH. You know, after I've done my sparging and all that, I got it in a fermentation bucket and I'm, I'm letting it cool down before, you know, to, to uh, pitch the yeast. So I usually check it in that neighborhood before I pitch the yeast. And don't, one, one point of advice is I don't chase the pH. Once I've, once I've tested my what's in the fermentation bucket and I've added the yeast, that's the last I check it. Uh, the pH will change as yeast is doing its job. It will change a lot too. So I, I just don't chase the pH after, you know, um, right before I, you know, after I put in my yeast, I'm done checking the pH. Okay. What are we going to do now? 
I got a little experiment I've been wanting to try for a while now because um, me myself I like visual uh, so what I'm going to do is I have some sugar water sugar water I've checked it it's at 1.085 uh, with a little bit of yeast nutrient in it uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the same amount in, in five jars okay so it's all the same uh, sugar wash so it's all identical there and then what I'm going to do is adjust each jar to a different pH all right I'm going to have some right directly in the middle and so I'm going to do five jars I'm going to go each side of neutral right and then we will add the exact same amount of yeast in each one I will put an airlock in, in each one uh, more or less just, just so I can watch activity um, I just want to see what activity is going on um, and what we'll do is I'll report back to you like in the beginning each hour and then after that I'll step up the time and I'll just keep it all written down I want to just see what each one and I'll put a sticker on each or right on the jar of you know like neutral how is it going to act uh, real acidic or real base and uh, we'll see how the yeast acts I just wanted to see that so let me get set up and get each jar with the same amount of sugar I'm gonna call it sugar wars because that's basically all it is in each one and then uh, We'll move on for there all right so let me get that poured in and then I'll be back where am I at all right so I got my five jars here here's the uh, uh, pH that I got 2.5 4 5.2 7 and 9 all right so each one of these containers I got two ounces of daddy's yeast so all I gotta do is I'm gonna put this in each one more okay I've been wanting to do this experiment for a while okay so what I'm going to do now is I made up some airlocks that I can put on these jars And like I said before, I was at um, 1.085 on the amount, uh, amount of sugar that's in the water. One more. All I got left to do is put some little bit of water in the airlock. Just, and I mainly want to see uh, activities. What I'm getting at is to see activity. And then I'll put put these all in my fermentation room so that they uh, will be the correct temperature. I mean, they're right now, but it's going to get cold tonight. I don't want them to get cold. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll check the time, and I'll come back in one hour, and we'll give them a little uh, look at and see what we got going on. Okay. So hopefully we'll get a nice good little visual out of this I'm looking forward to that we'll see what happens all right so I'll see you in an hour okay so it's been one hour there's 2.5 you can see that I put red food coloring in there so you can see it's starting to push the bubbles up same with the four the uh, five uh, 
7, and 9. Okay, they're all starting to work a little bit, but it seems like the 5.2 and 4 might be the happiest so far. Alright, so we'll come back in another hour. Okay, it's hour two. Let's see what's going on. We got our 2.5. Uh, don't seem like it's doing much. The four, it just bubbled a second ago. Oh, and there, two five just bubbled. The 5.2, it seems to be working pretty good. It's bubbling more often than any of them. All right. The 7 is, eh, a little bit. I think I might got a leak on that. And the 9. Okay, so it's hour 4. I mean, I see activity in all the uh, jars. And if you look in the... You can really see the activity in the 5.2. You see, really see a lot of activity, and the bubbling is going pretty good. Uh, the least activity, surprisingly, is the real base. Hardly, almost not, not a little bit going on, but not a lot. But you are starting to see a cap building on top really on the 5.2 so that's really telling me that 5.2 is where it's going to be all right so we'll come back later and check it again okay so we're about i guess it's about 30 hours in let's start at the 2.5 ph level you see a lot of activity going there you see the yeast moving up and down uh pretty interesting now let's move over to the, the four. You got a lot more activity going on there, and the whole liquid looks a lot wider. So it looks like that we're gaining a lot more yeast. It is just working a lot. Okay, they're all working so far, but that one just seems to be a little bit more. Now let's move over to. The, um, let me move the camera down just a little bit. Okay, here's the 5.2. It is really, it's going real well. A lot of activities. Really see the yeast, you know, working a lot. I hope you can see that. Can you see that? What if I put the light behind it? That'll. If you can see that it is really a lot of activity going on. Okay, now let's move up to the to the seven. Here is it's a it's less activity. It is moving some. You can see the yeast going up and down. It's moving some, uh, but not as much as at five point two. Okay, so now let's move up to the to the last one, and that's going to be the nine. You put the light in the front. I think it's it's hard to it's hard to see. It's not got a whole lot going on. So, as of this point in time, as the for yeast activity and pH, it seems like at 5.2, you know, and somewhere in between the, which would be 7.4, that is really doing well. It is very, very interesting. It seems like the more acidic, the happier that yeast is. But even down here at the, the 2.5, it's, it's got a lot more activity than the, than the 9. This is cool. Okay, so this, like I said, this is 30 hours into it. 
uh, we'll give it some more time and we'll come back. Okay. Okay, welcome back to Still Works and Brewing. It has been uh, five days, okay, with our pH experiment. So, I think it's about done, so I'm going to call it the end of it. So what's actually going on? What's my um, assessment? Well, they all are still working a little bit, okay? Remember, this is 2.5, 4, 5.2, 7, and 9. Uh, level of pH, okay? Uh, I will have to say, I will, you know, we've all been taught <coughs> or the best pH for us is somewhere between 5.2, 5.4 in that neighborhood. And that, I believe that is where yeast is the happiest. Uh, that started first and it pretty much went steady with activity okay and uh, it finished up first alright I mean you might see a little bit of it might be because I moved them okay so 5.2 here yes it started first it stayed a steady uh, activity wise and it finished up first okay and it went out from there, okay? The next two to four and the seven was very similar to the 5.2. It lagged a little bit. But the interesting thing I found that on the end spectrum of the spectrums, the 2.5, the, the more acidic, it did a lot better than the nine the, the mostly base. And I thought that was interesting. You would think more too much acid would hurt them, but actually the least activity and the slowest activity was the, the more base, the, the nine. I thought that was pretty interesting. Okay, I just thought this would be like a little visual experiment. I know we didn't put it under a microscope or anything like that, but we got to see a visual. Actually, the 2.5, if you look, it's still working a little bit. Uh, it's a little slow, but it is still working. Uh, you see a little yeast laying on the bottom. I guess dead yeast laying down on the bottom. Um, so, overall, the books are right. 5.2 to 5.4 is the best spot for your yeast. Uh, I proved it to myself. Uh, but if you're a little bit... A little bit off one way or another, eh, it ain't going to hurt you too awful bad. But, hey, let's drive for the best, right? Okay, so I hope everybody enjoyed this experiment. I thought it was pretty interesting. I hope you did too. I guess the last thing i got to say is, hey, thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time here on Still Works and Brewing. Cheers, everybody. That was neat.